and unfortunately this is my last day my last full day of riding I'm gonna take uh, the Himalayan back up to Matada and turn it back into the owner it's really it's been a very enjoyable trip very different uh, riding in the Yucatan versus when I was uh, riding to the Sierra Gorda I am in Tikit it's a small pueblo on my route riding uh, back to Matada. I've been getting off the main route and just riding through uh, small pueblos along the way. Hit a bump. Looking at the map, I'm pretty injured. My leg is bleeding pretty good right now. Some people here are uh, getting an ambulance. Hopefully, be soon because I'm bleeding a lot out of my leg. Gracias, señor. He's going to put a tourniquet on. Puede levantar la pierna. Sí, sí. Yeah, sí. Yeah. Por favor. Put a tourniquet on me right now. I had been traveling through the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico for three weeks. For the first week of my trip, I enjoyed the company of my friend Joe. He and I were traveling by local buses, and we explored cities, pueblos, cenotes, before meeting up with his wife, Margie, and some of her female cousins, who were on a girls' retreat at her cousin Mary's house in Merida. I was invited to join the group for a few days of sightseeing, before picking up a Royal Enfield Himalayan Adventure motorcycle to explore more of the Yucatan on my own. At dinner one night, I got to meet briefly with Mary's friends Boo and David and Nancy, who were all staying in Merida. Boo and David were house-sitting for Mary while she returned to the United States for a few months, and Nancy was a full-time non-native resident of Merida. Little did I know that these strangers would play a major role in my survival in just a few days. So how did I end up in the side of the road in Mexico, injured and alone? It was my last night. I was to fly back to the United States the following morning. My friends had all returned back home to the United States within the last week or two. Mary had also returned, and her house was being house-sat by Boo and David, who I had only met once. Mary offered for me to spend uh, my last night at her house. It's closer to the airport and would also save me the cost of the hotel. So I accepted. I, I had uh, texted uh, Boo to let her know that I was on my way. When I arrived, I dumped off all my gear. We socialized a bit. And then I headed off across Merida to return the motorcycle back to its owner. On my phone, I had the owner's contact information and directions to his house. I had been having a problem keeping my phone charged for the last week and a half. The USB uh, charging port was not working. So my phone was almost out of charge when I left to go across town and return the bike. A few hundred meters from the owner's house, I entered a roundabout. I was in the right-hand lane and I was Curving through the roundabout, the phone was coming loose out of the cradle. I inadvertently grabbed the phone with my left hand to prevent it from dropping into traffic and had the bike only with my right hand as I went over one of Mexico's famous topes or speed bumps. That speed bump made my bike turn to the right. I went off the road and smacked square on into a utility pole. And as you can see from this Google map view, the utility pole was a light pole, was only a couple feet off of the driving lane. If I would have been two feet to the right or left, my injuries would have been much minor than they were. When I hit the pole, I immediately knew that I was in trouble. My, my helmet was on, um, I was conscious. I took the helmet off examined myself and I could tell that I had a broken bones in my wrist and a severe laceration in my leg. Traffic had stopped, people got out of their cars, and I motioned to a woman standing nearby 
to call 911 as I knew that I was going to need hospital care. I also knew that I was going to need assistance. I still had the phone in my left hand. I opened up WhatsApp. I had the contact information from for the motorcycle owner. I handed it to a bystander, had him call him, let him know I was in an accident, and let him know where the location is. Within a few minutes, the owner showed up. I wasn't looking, trying to get to the address. Oh, yeah. It's okay? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, I love you guys. I'm an adventurer. I'm sorry. About the same time the owner of the motorcycle arrived on scene, also arrived was the ambulance and a police officer. The police officer, the owner of the motorcycle, and one of the ambulance personnel were having a, a discussion, and the owner of the motorcycle came over to tell me that the police officer wanted a guarantee that any damage to the light pole that I caused was going to be paid for before he would release me to the ambulance to go to the hospital. Fortunately, the owner of the motorcycle convinced the police officer that the damage was minor and he did release me to the emergency personnel to tend to my wounds. I was loaded onto the ambulance, but then there was another question, and that is where to take me. Mexico basically has a two-tiered hospital system, state-run hospitals, which many Mexicans go to, and then private hospitals in some of the major cities. The private hospitals are more equivalent to hospitals in the United States where I'm from. The Mexican hospitals are ones that give basic care, usually long waits, uh, less superior care uh, to injuries like what I had also. So the owner of the motorcycle, he said that I definitely needed to go to one of the private hospitals. Otherwise, I could be just sitting in a waiting room for hours, have some bandages put on me and set off to go with uh, improper treatment. So uh, the other part of the, the discussion was payment. As, as I learned in the Mexico uh, healthcare system, they always want to be paid up front, generally in cash if it, if it can be, sometimes only in cash. And the uh, people in the, um, uh, in the emergency uh, vehicle that were going to haul me in the ambulance, that were going to haul me to the hospital, wanted to be guaranteed that they were going to be paid. And I pulled out my two credit cards, my two ATM cards, and they would not accept them because I was not a Mexican national and my bank cards and credit cards were not drawn on a Mexican bank. So once again, I was fortunate to have the owner of the motorcycle, who was bilingual, there to help me. I don't know what I would have done if I would have just been by myself with no uh, English speaking people to help me. My Spanish is not that good. So he told the people in the ambulance uh, that he would vouch for me. His credit was good. And they were able then to take me to Clinica Merida, which is a major private hospital in the city of Merida. When I arrived into the emergency room at the hospital, once again, I was confronted with how am I going to pay for any services that the hospital is going to render me? They did not want my credit cards. They did not want my ATM cards. I didn't have any cash on me. And they wanted somebody with national ties or cash to guarantee payment before they would admit me into the hospital. 
Now I did get emergency treatment and was waiting in the emergency room to try to figure out how to get myself actually into the hospital. And this is when I decided to call Boo and ask for help. He's recording. Okay. Hey, uh, Boo, this is Bruce. I am crashed the motorcycle on my last few yards, and I'm in the hospital at... What's Clinica de Merida. Clinica America. Merida. Mer Merida. Clinica Merida. I have a broken hand, and my foot is injured. Can you come down here? Somehow they need to have another person here with me, and you guys are the only ones I know here. Boo and David don't have a car. They were just uh, visiting for a few months and generally walked or used Uber. They contacted Nancy, who's a, a U.S. citizen, but she's a resident, a national resident of Mexico. She owns a car. They came to the hospital to my rescue. Three people who I barely knew I had just met. Because Nancy has a residency card as a resident of Mexico, they did accept her credit cards. And she put money down to get me into the hospital and through surgery. And this is, again, somebody who I had only met once. The kindness of strangers never ceases to amaze me. All right, I did a series of x-rays on me and uh, my arm and my, my leg on the left side and the arm is broken in multiple places. Uh, so I'm scheduling a surgery tomorrow with a uh, specialist and, and he speaks some English from what I understand so I'll be able to communicate with him hopefully. Uh, orthopedic surgeon and then uh, my leg and a gash on the leg is down to the bone uh, I lost quite a bit of blood uh, they can't just do surgery on that so they're gonna do some consultation and uh, I mean they can't do simple sutures so do some consultation and probably schedule a, another surgery for my left leg, uh, so a lot of tendons and other things flailing, hanging out there, uh, pretty darn painful. So I'm resting now, um, might get something to eat uh, and uh, see how the surgery, first surgery goes in the, in the morning, but um, I'm still thankful for my new friends here who come to my rescue uh, and uh, are here to vouch for me and help to put a down payment on this and uh, you know be here as my my communication too it's uh, just unbelievable how the uh, people can just you know rally around and then help I'm, I'm so I'm so blessed for that I can't say how much I'm, I'm thankful because it's just uh, I'm just over, overwhelmed by it. Uh, uh, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Anyway. Well, it's the middle of the night on uh, the day before I'm supposed to leave. My flight leaves in about four hours. Obviously, I'm not going to make it. I contacted my daughter and she canceled the flight for me. The orthopedic surgeon came by, explained what he's going to do. He's going to put a plate on my ulna that's kind of shattered in my right wrist, left wrist area. And then at the same time, he'll do a surgery to reconstruct my knee and uh, suture up the mess that's in there, tendons and such. Total time will be about three hours. Hopefully get the surgery in tomorrow afternoon. I'll put a cast on both that'll last only about two weeks. 
and so uh, doesn't want me to travel during that time. So I'll be staying here for another two weeks in Mexico, <laughs> which uh, it was fine for me, but not under conditions like this, obviously. <laughs> Well, buenos dias. It's, uh, I think, going on 7 o'clock in the morning. I slept off and on during the night, so I had to get some rest. They fussed around a little bit with me, took my temperature and blood pressure, which seems to be okay. So that's all good news. Now I'm just kind of waiting here about the schedule for a surgery. Well, I had the anesthesiologist come in go through the risk factors for going into surgery and I'm in pretty good health for my age so he seems to think it'll be a, a low risk which I believe so too. Still waiting to schedule the surgery, hopefully it's happening today. He thinks I'll be able to uh, leave the hospital tomorrow but we'll see how I do. I'm in the room where I'll spend the night after my surgery which is in about an hour. Uh, they'll prep me so nice single room just me in it I'll have a woman sitting here all night long that we've hired uh, just to make sure that I'm okay um, you know in case you know they have to have somebody watch me after surgery I am done and off to surgery thank you everybody for all your help I can't tell you how much I really appreciate it it's just awesome having all the people supporting me on this trip Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm in the room. I had surgery. Uh, total time was about five hours. Um, it's evening now. Uh, I was able to eat some food. I, I have a caretaker. She's out right now. I've been staying with me all, all night long on my first night. I've not talked to the doctor yet, but kind of what I understand is the upper part of my... Uh, my, my arm, the, the, the ulna area was uh, was fine. He didn't have any problem with it, but my leg, the uh, the knee is it's going to need some more work, maybe, or it's going to have some some complications. So I'll learn more about that when I see him. Probably, in, I don't know. Could be in the middle of the night, but uh, definitely in the next eight hours. Probably, I'll know more. Well, good morning. Today's Saturday, I believe. It's my fourth day in the hospital. I'm feeling better, although I don't look that great, probably. <laughs> Never, nobody ever looks great sitting in the hospital beds, and so I have looked better myself, too. But uh, the doctor's going to come back in today. He was in uh, last night a little bit, uh, too and going to look at me. I'm hoping he discharges me today, but uh, you know they're mostly worried about infection in my leg at this point. Um, and they've been giving me lots of antibiotics here, so, uh, but it seems to be pretty good, you know, after day four here, three days. There's a, some swelling for sure in my leg because it's not getting a circulation. Um, but, uh, you know, I've been sitting in this bed <laughs> since Wednesday, so I'm active guy, ready to get up and get out of here. Uh, they did give me a, a bath yesterday, which was awkward, you know, because I'm an old guy sitting in a bed and two young people, young lady, young gentleman came in, did their thing, gave me a bath and it felt good. I'm glad they did. And uh, food here is never that great. Uh, you know, it's a hospital, even in Mexico. Uh, so I'm just in a waiting mode right now. I expect the doctor to be here sometime this morning. My friends will show up too, and we'll get some news and go from there. It's really just a waiting time game at this point. Boo and Nancy are fairly fluent in uh, Spanish. They were down to the hospital every day visiting me, sometimes twice a day, and they were taking care of all the logistics, all the finances, uh, paying bills, uh, making sure that uh, friends and family were informed about what was going on uh, with me at the hospital at the time. And they were also keeping me company, keeping my spirits up. 
I ended up calling uh, Boo and Nancy my angels, and you'll hear me reference that oftentimes in the video. They were truly were angels, and David too, he was right there by the side, but his command of the Spanish language was less than mine, so I had to give credit to the, the two ladies who were just on top of it, I have to say. Really, really appreciated their help. Well, it's day four for me in the hospital here in uh, Merida. You can see I've got a smile on my face because the doctor came in earlier and he's letting me leave today. So I'm all excited about that. My friends, you know, angels, <laughs> um, they're out there uh, making sure everything's paid. You have to be, everything has to be paid before they, they'll let me out. And we can only pay in cash in pesos. So they're running around to ATM machines with my credit cards and their credit cards and trying to get uh, pesos in order for me to get out here. Otherwise we have to transfer money from the United States and it probably won't get here until tomorrow and I have to spend another day. So they're working really hard just to get me out and we'll figure out that. It's uh, incredibly less expensive for an emergency like this here in Mexico than uh, in the United States. I may talk about that later. I don't want to really talk about it right now. Uh, but that's been actually very helpful for me uh, because um, here in Mexico, you, you pay up front for, for everything. You know, you don't pay after it's done and, and uh, don't use a lot of credit. And it's a different culture. And in the medical area here, it's a different culture too. It's a really a learning experience, even for my friends here who, are, who live here. You know, they've never gone this intensive into the medical system, so they're learning a bit too. So, so here we are collecting cash pesos in order to get me out of jail because they're not going to take the card. See you guys. All right, heading out of the hospital. <laughs> day four, almost day five, and I'm ready. <laughs> All right. And then we go. The second time I've been in an ambulance in five days. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend to anybody going twice in an ambulance in five days. <laughs> That's something I would put on a travel itinerary. <laughs> Here at the Casa, Casa Mariposa, my home for a while. To the house we go. It's uh, a key. Yeah. yeah. It's the it's the other touch. Alright. There's the bed. And we are here. That is it. <laughs> well I spent my first night at uh, Mary's uh place, Mariposa. <laughs> and uh and it was fine. Boy, I, I slept pretty good. Did get up in the middle of the night. You know, kind of wide awake, but I was more thinking than in pain at all. Wrote some notes, and I uh, was able to rest and actually sleep on my side a little bit, which I haven't been able to do for a few days. So that was really good. My angels are out right now, trying to find up a uh, a wheelchair uh, for me to get me a little bit more mobile. Today's a Mexican holiday, so not much is open. They are at a, a Walmart, and hopefully successfully get some wheels so I can get. Uh, get back riding again, huh? <laughs> so everything's really going good. I'm just so happy that uh, I've got folks here helping me out. Well, this is my second night at uh, Mary's house out of the hospital. And like last night, I come wide awake right around 1 a.m. I think it's because I've been sleeping a little bit during the day. And also, I start to get a little pain that comes in through my... Uh, my arm, a little dis discomfort, trying to find a right spot to keep the leg and the arm, keep it stable from moving. Of course, I'm wanting to flop around uh, a bit lying in bed. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm just, it's a slow process and it's frustrating, of course, because I just want to be better. And of course, I want to be back on a motorcycle exploring, <laughs> which is crazy to think that that's what I want to do. But but I actually do. <laughs> but uh, 
Oh, uh, gosh, I keep saying this, but I'm, Thanksgiving's coming up in two days, and this Thanksgiving, I have a lot to be thankful for. Just a tremendous amount of effort by strangers, you know, that didn't have to come forward as much as they still continue to do. So I think my progress is moving forward in spite of me being up at 1 a.m. in the morning <laughs> making this video. I'm still in good spirits, so I think that's, you know, 50% of healing is having your mind in the right attitude. And mine, mine's right there, man. It's right there. There is a sad but happy story with this little dog right here, this little uh, street dog. We've been here. How you doing, girl? We've been here for three days, and our first day, this poor little girl got hit by a motorcycle right in front of, of me. I, uh, she, was, she looked like she wasn't going to survive, and I, I picked her up, and I put her on the side of the road. And I got up every morning the last couple nights to see if she was okay, and she was breathing and moved. How you doing, girl? How you doing, girl? Yeah. And every day she's gotten a little better, and now she's over in the Central Park and found a place to stay. So I think she's going to survive. Three weeks earlier, my friend Joe and I were in Tikal, and the first night that we arrived, a street dog got hit by a motorcycle on a very busy street. I couldn't just leave her there. I moved her off on the side of the road into a safe spot, and every morning I would get up and check on her. I gave her some food and some water. I moved her to make sure she was always in a safe location. And when I left, I was pretty sure that she was going to make it. Now, after my motorcycle accident, I had the kindness of strangers taking care of me. And I couldn't help but feel that there was a little karma in play. Well, I had a bath today, which feels really great, you know. Uh, get all the stickiness of the you know, tropical weather off me. And here's, here's where I'm at. This is Mary's uh, uh, casa right, right here. Oh, you can see it right there. The door and there's this street. So I'm staying right here in her Mexican neighborhood. And tonight we're going to go out and, uh, well, first of all, tonight we're going to go see my surgeon. So hopefully he's going to give me a thumbs up and stuff. And then we're going to go to a cantina maybe. We have a beer and a taco. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, get a uh, little bit of wound care. Here is the wound, what it looks like two weeks after. Still pretty nasty. Yeah, right? Yeah. Three weeks after my accident, the surgeon okayed me to return to the United States as long as I had somebody to accompany me. My good friend Joe offered to return to Mexico and accompany me back to Oregon. I had been enjoying the company of Boo, David, and Nancy, and we had one last outing to the cantina before I packed up my gear, called an Uber, and headed out to the airport. 5.30 in the morning, and we are heading to the airport in uh, Mexico, in Merida, on my way home. Well, it is day 100 since my motorcycle accident in Madrid, out in Mexico. And uh, as you can see, I'm still on crutches. I'm also using a wheelchair if I need to carry something along. My uh, three injuries that I had, basically a broken wrist, which is coming along pretty good. I'm in physical therapy for that. Large uh, infected laceration on my calf. It has taken a while to heal. I've had a couple of surgeries on it, but that is in pretty good shape now too. And my third injury, which is why I've got the crutches, is a broken plateau of my tibia where it uh, connects into my knee. Uh, few surgeons have looked at it and they recommended, they sort of pass me on. So I've been in a bit of a waiting list with uh, trauma surgical specialists that must be just overbooked. So um, I'm gonna have a consultation, video consultation, in a week with a uh, trauma surgeon in Portland, Oregon. 
I'm hoping something comes positive uh, of that because obviously it's been a, a, a hundred days that I've been walking or <laughs> traveling around with a broken leg and, and I really want something to be done and to get fixed. So it, it is frustrating. I'm a patient man, but I am getting a little bit uh, frustrated. Our Some of our healthcare system is just so backlogged. Um, I'm sure there's others in my situation too. So anyhow, you know, that's the status at day 100. So as I wrap up this video, it's now been four months since my accident. My knee still has a long ways to go. It's looking like I'm probably going to have to get a partial knee replacement. I'll know more about that when I visit my surgeon again in a couple of weeks. Um, in the meantime, I still plan to continue to be as active as I can. Um, how did I survive this? Well, obviously, it's a little bit of luck involved, some perseverance and positive attitude on my part, but also the kindness of strangers. I wouldn't be here if people I barely knew and just recently met didn't step up and uh, help me through this ordeal. I also want to thank, of course, all my family and my friends that have stood by me throughout this and continue to be my support system. And I want to thank all the viewers of my channel, too. I intend to continue with an active lifestyle. I'm going to get back on that horse, do some more senior adventures, and, of course, create some videos. So I hope you will stick around, too, and I will see you next time on one of my senior moments.